It is wonderful to be here on Oslo Big Day today, coming somewhat straight from San Francisco and Silicon Valley, where I lead a company called Next Step, and we help organizations grow and change and become digital. And one of the big topics I get asked very often is, what is the role of people? What's going to happen to our jobs in the future? So let's take a minute and think out to the future. We've heard that 10 years ago, the iPhone and apps became popular. 20 years ago, Tona started thinking about culture and data and all these great concepts. Thinking forward, just imagine. Imagine a world where what you think and what you desire magically comes to you. You're hungry, you crave a pizza, and there it is. You need to get your children to school, and you simply walk them to the door and they're happily at school in the next moment. Your cares have gone away. You live in a utopia, a utopia that's also sustainable. It's a green environment. Outside of your window is your work, the children's school, the shopping, the advisement, the entertainment is all right at your fingertips. That may seem a little bit far away, but these kinds of environments are starting to exist today. This photo is actually from a real implementation in Singapore of a circular environment in which everyone works together to support themselves. This is heavily through the use of data. In this utopia world, you might have different colleagues. In the cafeteria, you may share with the robots. Machines will take care of the basics. I saw some smiles describing the children magically get to school and the pizza magically appears on your plate. But there may be some concerns of what does this really mean? Is it science fiction? It's really not science fiction because when you think about the growth of data and the use of AI in 90% of organizations today to predict our needs and to deliver to us what we want as we think about it, the amount that we contribute every day when we communicate on social media, I'm craving a pizza at six o'clock every Tuesday that contributes to building this utopia. This is in today's technology. When you add in something called quantum computing, the next generation platforms that will be 100 million times faster, 100 million times faster than the technology we're using today. And those are becoming real today. A Bay Area startup called Rigati is today offering quantum computing as a service. So the local pizzeria could be 100 million times faster in responding to your craving you just put on Facebook. That can be reality. But it does bring us back to that question of what does this mean for jobs? If the pizza delivery comes by drone, what happens to the Fedora guy that rides his bike? In many respects, the jobs that we have known, many of us for years, may indeed go away. Various predictions say between 35 to 60 percent of basic, repetitive, day-to-day -day jobs will be replaced by technology. But I would suggest that is not the end of the world. In fact, that can be the beginning of a whole new world and a whole new way of looking at work that can be utopia. Because if we're all really honest with ourselves when we do the basic day-to-day -day stuff in our jobs, the dealing with the Excels, the getting them to add up, the doing the accounting, the doing, the driving, 
some of us don't really like doing all of that basic stuff. We'd really rather use our minds, be challenged, be creative, work with others, create something, build something. And those are the kinds of jobs that we see in the future. In the future, the digital natives, the 16 to 30 year olds today, the millennials, the Gen Zers, they are coming into the world with the technology skills to build the platforms, to code, to analyze, to be the deep learning knowledge makers. For the rest of us, our roles in this changing world is to be the leaders, to bring the context, to bring the experience, to bring the ability to provide the digital natives, both humans and machines, to provide them with guidance of how they can create our world of utopia because they don't know what society wants or needs. They don't have the years of experience. That's up to the more mature generations to lead and empower by giving context, giving knowledge, giving structure, mentoring and coaching so the digital folks combined with the experience can create that future world. The role of humans is around creativity, it's around problem solving, it's around serving customers. Someone still has to analyze the data. Someone has to define which direction the world is going. Someone has to create the solutions. That's the role of people. So if you look at Tesla in the Bay Area, they have one of the largest automated factories. Tesla heavily leverages robotics and technology to build the cars. The assembly line is managed by technology. But the very critical element in how those cars come off that assembly line is driven by people. The people do the quality checks. The managers solve the issues. The customer service, customer experience people make the final tweaks. They do the planning for what will be built next on the assembly line to serve customer needs. So in many ways, people, people that have experience, people that understand customers, people that can apply that to technology are even more critical in this future world than they are today. If we look at some predictions that were made about two years ago by the World Economic Forum of what skills would be needed in 2020, these are all human skills. This does not say coding. It does not say algorithms. The skills needed in organizations are problem solving, adaptability, cognitive flexibility to analyze and make decisions, service orientation, negotiation, people leadership. That's the role of people in the future. We take what was predicted as the needed skills and then we look at some data from the US Job Labor Board they did a study of a thousand corporations and asked hiring managers, when you hire people, what do you look for as the traits that are most critical for the candidate you select? We're back to people skills. Ability to analyze, ability to manage people, solve problems. That's the role of people in a world of technology. So technology gives us a good base, but humans are extremely critical in leading, guiding, providing structure, 
motivating and empowering people, connecting customers to services, solving customer problems, adding that human touch, and building teams, teams that may include machines and humans, but building teams to work together to solve problems and create that next world of the future. One example of this is a company we worked with in Central Europe that was part of a grocery store chain. And in their store, this goes back about three years ago, the local customers loved to come in for their weekly shopping and would always chat with the cashier as they were buying their weekly groceries. But over time, the company said, you really need to think about those self-checkout machines because it's quite costly to pay somebody to simply do nothing but scan groceries. So the manager said, OK, we'll install self-checkout. And what they found was people were a little bit reluctant to use the self-checkout. And I don't know about you all, but I personally still feel really stupid when I go up to those things. It's like you, you weigh your groceries, and then you put, yeah. You know. So they found that people felt stupid using them. So they trained the tellers, the previous cashiers. They trained them in how to teach people to use self-checkout. And as people went to the, the self-checkout, they still had that ongoing conversation. Good to see you today, even though they're still scanning groceries. They found that the younger generation really were very happy to get out of this scanning grocery mode. So the manager said, hang on, I've got some cashiers that don't want to do this. I've got customers that want to talk to somebody. And I've got self-checkout things I had to buy. How do I create a win-win? The answer was, I take the cashiers away from the tellers and train them on food products. I send them to classes to learn how to prepare fish, and they work in the fish counter. Somebody that has a passion for vegetables learns new recipes and produce capabilities in the vegetable market. So they retrained their previous cashiers to be experts in nutrition, cooking, food, and place them around the store. The result was much happier employees, much happier customers, a very high increase in customer loyalty. Because people came in not just to buy the grocery, but to learn what can I actually do with mushrooms different than the way I've been making them the last 30 years. And I had a great recommendation last week from Sally on mushroom soup. I need to go tell her how great it turned out. And Sally says, oh, next time you do mushroom soup, you should go talk to John and get some fish, because that goes really good as a second course. So their revenue went up significantly, happier customers and happier employees, while the checkout was done by the machine. So in this world of tomorrow, there is a role for both technology and for humans. I would encourage, as you're here at the conference today, think about what are areas that you can learn and become expert in, that you can be that customer service expert knowledgeable in a new area. Learning something new increases your value in the workforce. It's one of the number one things companies look for, willing and able to learn something new. Talk to others that are here at the conference. Communication, customer service, dialogue, collaboration, those are the skills for tomorrow. So there is a role for both, and I personally think this is a great time to be alive and to really give back to society as people. So I encourage you to, to follow in that journey. So thank you.
Thank you.